This is my incredibly awesome color spoof app. I know, I know, you're jealous. Don't be. I'm going to show you exactly how to make one. Yours will be just as good. Actually, it will be better. You're going to be able to make one better than mine. I will post my game and the code in the description for you to use, for you to explore, for you to mess around with. Keep in mind, plagiarism is serious. And as a student, you absolutely cannot turn any part of this in for an assignment. But hopefully you can learn from it, use it, build on it, and make something cool. And if you do, definitely share it in a comment below. Um, super fast, how the app works. You would hit play. I already did. Player one's going to pick a color. Oh no, they got it wrong. And if I want to cheat, by the way, I left my council log. So button one's correct here. Player two got a point. Player one, should they be wrong again? So on and so forth. Something I'm super proud about my app is that it gets easier or harder depending on if you're winning and losing, right? So the person who is going to be winning or who is getting them right is going to have a more difficult color selection. It's going to get closer and closer together to be the same color. And if you're losing by a lot, you're going to have an easier time. The colors get more obvious. So let me show you how I built it real quick. Let's go through the code. These variables up here are all global variables. That means every function within this can access them. So if I want to add two to random button ID down here, I can. And then I can also do it up here. And they both will get the same number um, when they call up that variable. Now, player's turn, this is keeping track of which player's turn it is, Originally, they called it um, next player or something like that. I don't know. I don't like it. So I renamed it player's term. And we use this to keep track of, well, who is actually playing. It's also going to be used later on down here in the switch player function and keeping score. So um, and then player one score, player two score are global variables. They had numbers. I used one and two. And then, well, they had uh, integers, right? The digits not uh, spelled out. And then set board. This is obviously a function call. And so right when the player hits reset or hits run, they are asking the computer set board. They're asking that function to run. What is that function? Thankfully, it's right here. And the code that we were, that I needed for this is I declare three variables, red, green, blue, right off the bat. I assign them to random colors between 0 and 235, like our friends Alexis and uh, Michael talked about. And that's because we are going to add 20 to them to get the color that's slightly different. And so if we let them be a random color up to 255, well, 255 plus 20 would still just be 255 because 255 is the max and the color would be identical. The person couldn't guess anything really. So that's why we only go to 235. And then we create this color using those variables. We then set all of our buttons background colors. And I set the property. I was proud of my title. So I gave it a unique ID. I set the title to be the color of the squares as well. Then now this is how I make it more difficult or easier depending on a player score. I added an if statement with this comparison operator, uh, the equality operator. So I'm checking if player's turn equals one. So is it player's one turn? And if it's player one's turn and why I need to know if it's their turn is because whoever is guessing, right? Whoever guesses I want the points of their score to impact the level of difficulty. So the original game had red equal red plus 20, right? This is the, these colors are being reassigned because they're going to be used down here for the answer. And so the original game had each one changed by 20 and have that be the answer. So the color would be off a bit. It would be off by 20, whatever pigment is, uh, colors of each category. I said, that's fine, 20, but minus score. So if the player has nine points, it's really only going to be off by 11 each, meaning the colors will be closer in distance. However, as they go negative, 
a negative plus a negative would be a positive. So if that particular player has negative 50 points, well, then the color is going to be 70 off the other. It will be obvious. So I say if players one's turn, set the color and change the color by player one score plus 20. And if player two scores turn, same thing or else, I guess. I check if it's player one, and if it's not player one, it's obviously player two, and I set the colors accordingly. I then diff I then use this as my diff color, right? I set that to be the diff color variable. And then, uh, oh, random button, yep, and then I select a random button by concatenating the string because all the button strings are they have ids of button four button three so i use the button string and then i concatenate it with a random number and this will actually create a string i then set the property of that chosen button and i use my council log here okay now when does anything else run on event so now to run any other function, it must be someone's turn and they must have clicked something. So if they click, I have all my uh, event listeners, button one, two, three, or four, that triggers the check correct function. And button one, button two, that's the parameter, whatever button they clicked. Well, it's the argument that's going to be in place of the parameter. So let's go look at check correct check correct button id oh what's the button id well let's say they clicked one that would be button one so what gets logged is checking button one if button id equals random button id huh how does that work well random button id is our global variable up here right we change the random button id inside of set board Right, that's where we created an ID where we used the word button, concatenated it with a number one through four, and that was our random button ID. So here I'm saying, and I can check the random button ID without having it as a parameter because it's a global variable, and I'm comparing it to our parameter to our argument button ID. Okay, if they are equal, that person must have got it right. So I council log, you got it right. And I update this score by one. Else, so if not equal, wrong, deduct three from the score. Game over, check game over is a function I created. Um, and that does this. So if player one's score equals 10, and I can ask about their score using an equality operator because these are also global variables. They don't need to be passed within the function. Game over screen player one label. If player two score equals 10, game over screen player two label. And the game over screen does, well, it will cover the entire screen. Then, once that function is returned, right, because it just continues on running all the other code. However, so switch player and set board. Yeah, the board actually technically changes after that function, but they'll never see it because we've switch, switched the screen. So that doesn't really matter. Um, now, what does say that function returns false? Well, it won't return anything. Say that no one's at 10, we then run, we call the switch player function. Where is that? Here it is. Inside of this, if player turns equal the uh, quality operator 1, and again, player's turns must be a global variable. So if it equals 1, meaning if player 1 is, if it's player 1's turn, then this is our switch players function. We want to change it to two. We want to hide the highlight. And I did change the highlight to yellow and I was proud of that. We want to hide the highlight and show it on uh, the player two element or hide it and show it on the player one element, which is this highlight. Okay, one, that highlight. So. Uh, and then we have a council log. Now, once we're done with switch player, we will keep going on our check correct function because we haven't hit the bottom of it yet. Then we run set board again. And that does just like it did in the beginning. It's going to run through, reset the colors, and get ready for round two, except the player would have switched over. 
semua. Do we miss update score? Switch player. Update score. Oh, okay. Yeah. I should have gone through. So the score is updated here and here. We might have talked about it briefly. If So if they get it right, update score. And that is just right here. Update score amount. Amount is passed as the parameter, right? One or a negative three. So negative three, we'll say. And that would be mean they got it wrong. But it doesn't really matter. The only thing we're checking, well, math-wise, it doesn't matter. The only thing we're going to check is which player. Is it player one? Okay, then their score is going to equal what their score used to equal plus amount. And so if it's a negative three, it would subtract three. If it's one, it adds one. So, and the same thing for... We then have this else. Oh, we then update set label. We change their score on the screen so it shows. And then we have else. Well, if it's not players one's turn, then it's player two turn. So P2 score equals whatever it used to equal plus amount, whatever was passed. And then we update the score. And that is my quick, quick tour through my code. So hopefully this is helpful. I am going to post the code with this. Keep in mind, so that's my code. I am going to hit share and post the code, right? But uh, keep in mind, though, plagiarism is a thing, and it is serious. Uh, yes, you can plagiarize code, and it is unacceptable, okay? Look at my code. You can remix it. Really, you can remix it. You can mess around with it. Do not be turning this in for assignments. Do not try to turn this in for assignments. I put my name in several places, um, not just places you see, okay? I want this to help you. I want you to learn from this. I want you to steal it and use it in your own way. Just don't turn it in for an assignment at school. Um, when you make your own, you should share yours in the comments below. I would love to see how you did yours and how much better it is than mine and how you built on mine or totally changed it. It'd be really neat to see your work as well. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to keep going with code.org.